escalating between the two sides. Sekunda Kermani and cameraman Malik Mudasser traveled to the city of Jalalabad. A new chapter is beginning in this conflict. We've come to its front line. The Taliban now rule the country. But here in Jalalabad, they're facing an almost daily stream of targeted attacks by the local branch of the Islamic State group. This, a roadside bombing. The hit-and-run tactics of the Taliban, now used against them. It's not just the Taliban who are under attack. Abdurrahman Marwin was a prominent social activist. His two young sons saw him gunned down earlier this month. When the Taliban took power, we were hopeful that all the violence and killing would finally stop. But now we face this new phenomenon with the name of IS. The Taliban's intelligence service has detained dozens of alleged IS members. Hundreds escaped from prison during the group's takeover. Dead bodies with notes labelling them IS fighters are dumped by the road every few days. But the Taliban won't admit responsibility for the extrajudicial killings. They accuse IS of being extremists. IS accuse the Taliban of not being radical enough. There are almost daily attacks in Jalalabad, it seems. Are you really in control of the situation here? Just as we defeated international forces on the battlefield with the blessing of Allah, we tell the world not to worry about any small group of traitors carrying out attacks here. They will be defeated too. IS has been launching attacks for years, but they've spread to new parts of the country since the Taliban came to power. This a twin suicide bombing on a Shia mosque in the Taliban stronghold of Kandahar. The group don't control any territory, but they have deadly cells, particularly here in Jalalabad. Ah yes, is much less powerful than the Taliban, but the attacks they're carrying out here are causing real concern, both for Afghans exhausted by bloodshed and internationally. American officials warn IS could launch foreign operations in as little as six.